Hello and welcome to another B1 cell biology video. This time we're looking at the triple content, the only triple content for this topic, and we're looking at agar plates, sterile technique, culturing microorganisms. Okay, so there's the reference to the course content, as you can see, pink background. So we're looking at triple science content here only. And we've got here some examples of those plates that we make with the agar. So it's full of agar jelly, providing the nutrients. And here we've got each of those colored discs is a different um, antibiotic. And you can see that we can culture the bacteria uh, that the patient has. We can put these discs on and we can see which is the most effective uh, antibiotic for them to be prescribed. So that's kind of a bit of putting it into um, practice kind of situation there. So what do microorganisms need to grow? Well, we know these kind of conditions already because we've talked about this sort of thing quite a lot in the past. They need a really good temperature. They need a supply of food, um, be able to remove products, okay, to um, have that oxygen. Uh, they don't have to have oxygen, but in this case, we're gonna give them oxygen, um, have a good pH, and I've said about temperature already. So we're looking at providing oxygen to keep them in aerobic conditions so they can undergo aerobic respiration. Okay, and you can see there the incubator. We have to store them at 25 degrees C in school. In industry, they could be um, stored at higher temperatures. You get the results quicker because you can see there 40 degrees C on the incubator. That is a really good temperature. We call it the optimum temperature. Uh, for maximum growth. So if you were in industry and you really needed to find out what bacteria is growing, how we were going to treat it, then you want to get the results really quickly. Okay, so this is kind of a really good structure for our six mark exam question on sterile technique. And sterile technique, if something is sterile, it means it is free from any kind of microorganism. So it's completely clean. And in... Um, a hospital environment or a lab environment, gamma radiation can be used to sterilize um, medical equipment, okay? And I've put into bold all of the really important things that we need to know, okay? Now we call it sterile technique because it's completely clean, also sometimes called aseptic technique. You probably just call it that agar experiment. Um, and we split it into three sections. This word inoculation, that's when we actually scrape onto the plates, the bacteria that we're looking to grow, that we're looking to culture. Okay, so that's the inoculating process. Now, before inoculation, doesn't really involve us. It's more the technicians preparing those plates for us. Um, the Petri dishes, as we bring them into school, they're in sealed bags um, and they have been sterilized. So they're completely sterile when they arrive. They're not, they've not been used before. The agar jelly is a nutrient jelly. It supplies all of the food to the bacteria to help it grow. And that agar jelly is heated really, really high. It's actually heated to 121 degrees C, but you'll see that's not in bold because you don't need to remember that particular figure. But heating the agar jelly sterilizes it. It kills the bacteria so that there isn't gonna be some existing bacteria growing in our plate. We just want to grow the bacteria that we are adding to the plate. So when we sterilize that jelly, it it turns into a liquid form and then that's poured onto the petri dishes and then it cools down solidifies and we store those in the fridge to reduce bacterial growth just like we put our milk and our food in the fridge to reduce the bacterial growth make it last longer we do exactly the same with the agar plates before we use them so those are the processes that go through before inoculation so you could as a six marker take two marks from there um, and then two marks from during inoculation and two marks from after. So during inoculation, if you cast your mind back to doing the practical in class, we remove the lid only when we need to, okay? We don't turn the lid upside down. 
because dust and bacteria can land on that lid and we certainly don't talk over um, over the the agar plate while it's open okay as we know a lot particularly with everything that's going on in the world right now we know about droplets in the air and they would land onto that plate um, and contaminate it so we need to avoid contamination of bacteria by not speaking while we're uh, doing the practical um, while that lid's open we also use a wire loop uh, we sometimes use a um, cotton wool bud instead because they're sterile um, and they're easier to use than sterilizing a wire loop but the exam board needs us to know about this wire loop method where we sterilize it in the bunsen burner you can dip it in hydrochloric acid as well and then sterilize in the bunsen burner and then you dip it into your bacteria and you streak that bacteria across the plate being careful not to um, to put any holes in the agar jelly it is really just the jelly so you can kind of jab it in sometimes and pull the jelly about we don't really want that to happen um so we've got that wire loop it could be that you know we're putting some yogurt on there it could be that in a in a lab scenario you might have um a bacteria um sample from a, a, a patient who needs antibiotics um it could be that you're we've done um clean hands dirty hands seeing it is hand sanitizer uh, more effective than hand washing so you kind of put a thumbprint down maybe um, as, as you'll control the dirty thumb if you like and then you could um, do wash that hand with soap and again another print and then on the other side of the plate you can put a thumb down and then you can use hand sanitizer and put a thumb down and you can kind of see the effectiveness so there's lots and lots of different applications of this we can see the effectiveness of different bleaches and i'll show you that in a minute or we can use um we can use it to just see what bacteria is growing in a house maybe they take some swabs in a house um, you've probably seen how clean is your house and they've done that and they take swabs and they say right this bacteria is growing in your house or it could be for that more useful application of finding out which antibiotic to um, prescribe to someone so after inoculation so we've now put all of our bacteria on the plate if we've added some um, bleach discs or um, antibiotics discs or whatever it is that we've decided to do we've now done that and then we need to store it so we use the sellotape in a cross fashion across the plate to hold the lid in place we don't put it all the way round because that will stop airflow and then it will become anaerobic conditions we want it to be aerobic so we leave those air gaps there is like a microporous tape that you can buy to put around it we've never used it in school uh, but you can use it and, and if you do um, this at college or university then you're probably going to use that tape it's um, it's a bit kind of like uh, it's a bit like cling film but also a bit more like that beeswax paper but it's porous so it allows oxygen to go through it but puts a nice um, hold to the plate um, we store them at 25 degrees C in school you do need to know that higher in industry as I said you get the results quicker we store them upside down uh, that's not written on there it stops condensation uh, it forms on the lid not on the agar plate and then we can measure the zone of inhibition okay now that is the area that's been killed by the antiseptic we're going to have a look at that in a bit and we need to know we won't be told that we can measure it using pi r squared okay to work out the area of a circle that one should be embedded in your mind okay so we take two points from each of those gives us a nice um six mark answer and it's good to give reasons why we do different things as well as just saying what we do say so why we do it so which antibiotic is the most effective? We're looking for the largest zone of inhibition. This one down here looks pretty good. Uh, this one up here also looks pretty good. So we can um, work out the diameter first of all, and then we can halve it for the radius because it's hard to know where the middle is. So if we do the diameter, half it for the radius, and then we can use pi r squared. Okay, and we can do that for all of them. If some of them are not really circular, then we can kind of um, work out an average diameter and then take that to the radius and do it go from there okay so that's what we're looking at let's keep going 
This is one of the experiments you might have done in school. So like I referred to before, how clean is your house? These two ladies used to come and um, tell people what bacteria they had growing in their house. And we did this experiment to say, okay, well, which is um, more effective? Is it okay to buy Tesco's thin bleach? Do we spend extra on the thick bleach? Is that more effective? Or should we spend a lot of money on the Domestos? So if you think about how we'd set this up, we'd have our bacteria on the plate. We'd probably have four paper discs, okay? Each paper disc has a different bleach on it. So we've got the thin, the thick, and the Domestos. And we put those discs onto the bacteria. And then we've got one extra disc. And that disc is just a piece of the paper, okay, with no bleach on it. And that's there as our control. And we have a control in most experiments that we do. It's something to compare the results to. Whenever you think control, you think compare. So we're gonna compare the results. And somebody could say, I think it's the bleach that's killing the bacteria. Somebody else could come along and say, I think it's the paper. If you put a piece of paper on bacteria, they will die. So we're putting that plain piece of paper there to show that the paper doesn't kill the bacteria, that it's what's on the paper that's actually killing them. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. So that's just another experiment that we sometimes do in school um, and just, you know, see if, if the um, Domestos was really worth the money, then we would have a much, much bigger zone of inhibition than for the others to reflect the price. Right, last, last slide for uh, this one. Uh, so we've got the zone of inhibition. That top left picture is one taken from an exam question. So it's showing you the zone of inhibition. The white area there is the bit that's been killed. So the black dot in the middle is the paper disc. The white bit is the bit of bacteria that's been killed. And then the gray bit is where there's still bacteria present. And some people get a bit confused with that, okay? And then we've got a practical example there on the top right, and we can see um, different zones of inhibition. And it could be that we've got to measure one of those and then um, use pi r squared. And you can see at the bottom there, we've actually looked at the diameter across that zone of uh, inhibition and it's 17 millimeters. So we then halve that to get the radius and then we use it in pi r squared. Okay, that will give us this area of the zone of inhibition. Okay, so that's everything that we need to know about that. That is um, a required practical, okay, for the triple science part of the topic. And we are at the end of that video. I hope you found that useful. And remember that six marker before inoculation, during inoculation and after inoculation. Great. Thank you.